Hey dear ones and welcome to day five of Adopt It. I hope you have been enjoying this course. I sure have been enjoying it. I just love um, getting closer to the Lord and it's something that I haven't always done in my relationship with Him, but now that I do it, I just love it. And you know, I know sometimes that I sound so prideful or whatever because I'm always talking about the rewards that come, but seriously, the rewards come from being in communion with Him. You know, we strive as people to be great and to do awesome things and to, you know, to just be, you know, stand out type of people. And the Lord does all of that for us automatically, you know, and then we get the added benefit, you know, being adopted by him as his children, we get the added benefit of all the other stuff, you know, been in communion with him is like the real reward, but we get the added benefit of, you know, honor among people and all of that stuff. So let's just jump in today. There's lots of stuff about Jesus and the father because they were so close. I'm not going to cover every scripture, of course, between the New Testament and stuff like that, but I'm going to cover probably about eight to ten of them. I hadn't planned to. I had to plan. I had planned to just like pick five and then just hit those. But there's so many um, that are crucial that I really want to um, expound on a little bit for us. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. First of all, we're going to look at Luke 1.32. And Luke 1.32 tells us that he... Um, this is the angel talking to Mary, telling her about Jesus coming, and he says to her, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor. We don't need to worry about those next sections, but what we want to look at is he will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Again, the reason that the Lord um, brought Jesus in, not just as a prophet, not just as his Holy Spirit to be placed on the earth, he was telling us fatherhood is who I am. It's the essence of myself as creator. So I really want people, if you know, if you don't understand anything else, please understand that I am loving you as your dad. And that's beautiful. I just love that. It's just a wonderful, like, even though that's like a simple statement, if you sit quietly and spend just a few minutes meditating on, you know, the Lord communicating that. And remember, this is the thing about love. Love is communicated through action, right? So just like think about what he's saying when he, you know, decided to send Jesus as his son instead of just putting his presence on the earth. You know, that's a really, really big deal. And think about all the lives you can change now that you can share this information with other people. You know, once you get the revelation of it, you can start praying it over people. There's no time or distance in the spirit. You can just start releasing it over them. But not only that, in conversation, in real time, you'll be able to just tell people, you know what? You are loved. You you know, I understand you're going through something difficult right now, but let me tell you what I know is the truth. And you can change somebody's life, you know, just like that. It's one of the awesome things about being in a relationship with the Lord. You know, even though he's doing all these wonderful things for us individually, he's doing it so that we can bless other people. We've got to sow our love and our revelation, and understanding our truth, everything into other people. He's all about multiplication and increase. Next, we're going to go to Matthew 3.17. And in Matthew 3.17, this is one of my favorites too. I mean, I'm kind of going to be all a little bit hyper about all of these scriptures today because I got good revelation about Jesus back in 2013. And when I started like just understanding things about him and seeing how he's everywhere in the Bible, you know, from the beginning to end, you know, because I always thought Jesus was contained to specific parts of the Bible, but he's everywhere. And then when you start reading that and understanding that, like that opens you up, you know, to, to love Jesus in a specific way. But then, you know, what does Jesus do? Of course, Holy Spirit reveals Jesus, Jesus reveals the Father. So then after you get this solid foundation of Jesus, and then he starts telling you all this stuff about God the Father, and then you're like, oh my gosh, you know, it's just a beautiful, just a wonderful life that we're able to live, you know. And I want as many of us to be able to live it as possible. Matthew 3 17 and a voice from heaven said oh this is Jesus' baptism a voice from heaven said this is my son the beloved with whom I am well pleased okay so he's getting baptized right and Jesus told John John was saying it's not fitting that I baptize you but Jesus said it has to be done and um, the great thing about this is I learned um, through studying from Perry Stone that remember the prophetic voice had stopped for 400 years between Isaiah, or was it seven, 400 years between Isaiah and um, when John the Baptist showed up on the scene. So the the writers, you know, the Jewish scribes at the time, not things that are recorded in the Bible, but the Jewish scribes, like Jewish history, because they write everything down. Why? Because God tells us to write stuff down. You know, he's a writer. Look at this book. 
Um, so in the historical writings from the Jews during that 400 years, they were saying, well, the next prophetic word that should come concerning the Messiah should be a voice coming out of heaven. And somebody got that through revelation, through a dream or something like that. And so they recorded that. And you can go back, like if you study old Jewish writings, in addition to the biblical Jewish writings, you can find that information. But they were expecting a voice to come out from heaven. Look what the Lord did. He spoke out of heaven, let the Holy Spirit descend. And he was saying, bam, that's the Messiah. So that's another um, evangelistic point that you can bring to the Jews. Like if you if you know how to um, lead them to the Lord through the Old Testament, that's a great way to do it. But you can also speak to them about things that are outside of the Bible, you know, because you have this knowledge about Jewish culture and history and stuff like that. And they will really listen to you and receive Jesus. It's good. And, you know, that's the goal because he said in the Bible, to the Jew first, to the Jew first, to the Jew first. So if you ever have the opportunity to minister or to bless or to serve um, a Jewish individual or the nation, do it. I'm telling you, one of the reasons that I have such great success is because Prince Hanley is one of my mentors and he's a Messianic Jew. All right. So the next thing we're going to look at is, oh, what I want to tell you about that one, Matthew 317. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Everything that God says about Jesus, he says about you. So he's saying, you're my beloved, and with you, I am well pleased. So you please the Lord. You please the Lord. It doesn't matter if your mother's mad at you, your father's mad at you, your husband or wife are mad at you, your children are mad at you, your boss is mad at you. The Lord says that he's well pleased with you. He's your beloved. You're his beloved. And we talked about yesterday, how is that possible? Because Jesus is the firstborn of the brethren. He's the first son. And as soon as we come into covenant, we become his brother and sister. And that means the Lord's our father. And everything that he says about one kid, he doesn't discriminate. Remember, the word says that he's no respecter of persons. So what he's saying to Jesus, he's saying to all of us. And another reason that's possible is because when you receive Jesus, what the blood does is it covers you, right? And the reason that you can go boldly before the throne of grace in time of need is because once you come into covenant and you receive Jesus, okay, so you move in to go up to the Lord, right? And what the Lord does is he sees Jesus first. That's what the blood does for you. That's what the blood does for you. It shields you. Like think about the blood that was put on the doors at Passover back in Exodus. That blood lets Jesus or lets God know that that's one of mine. So when you walk into the Lord's presence, he's like, he gets the picture of Jesus first and then you can enter right in so beautiful so beautiful i told you this is my favorite part i've got like revelation tingles all over like they're starting to come up by from my legs and rise up so this is good stuff i pray that you're getting good revelation and that my um hyperactivity does not deter us in any way um um the next thing we're going to go to is john 5 19 and in john 5 19 the lord is saying jesus is saying i only do what i see the father doing that's perfect because again, we are um, in dual identity with Jesus. We're not him, but we have his dual identity. Why? Because he came from the Father. We have the Father's DNA and all of the characteristics that come from being a child. Think about it. Um, you know, when you have kids, think about all the stuff that gets passed down in DNA. Well, we got divine DNA now. So, you know, that's what I was telling us yesterday. We could be great. We could be fantastic. We could be the best at whatever we want to be the best at because it's in our DNA to be the best. He's a God of excellence. Everything he does is excellence. Everything Jesus did is excellent. Jesus said we can do everything he did and greater. Why? Because he returned to the Father. So when he went away, the works and the things that he modeled for us down here on the earth, the Lord expected us to pick right up. The um, New Testament apostles and disciples did that. You know, as time went on and Constantine took over the church and started messing with us and then Catholicism came in and all that stuff, you know, we stopped trying to recreate Jesus' works on the earth. And we have to get that back. That's what we're supposed to do. Those are the things that please the Lord. You know, when we're, we're moving in, you know, helping people get healed and helping them come to know the Lord in greater, greater measure, you know, all those other things are great. Like being a teacher, that was my old profession, and, you know, owning businesses, having bakeries and all this stuff, insurance office, all the stuff that we do. Those things are wonderful as well. And you can always glorify and honor and serve and bless the Lord with those things. But the works that, you know, when he's telling you, I'm well pleased, I've got this great plan for you, I've got this great purpose for you. The plan is that we go and um, be Jesus, you know, be his brothers and sisters, be God's children on the earth first. That's our priority. So keep that in mind, you know, just like I know everybody has other jobs and stuff like that they do, but just keep in mind, try to find some way 
to bless the Lord and to bring the kingdom to the earth like every day. You know, you can't go wrong doing things like that. That's something the Lord told me when I was preparing for this class this week. He was saying, um, um, oh, he told me to Prince Hamley, you can't go wrong pursuing excellence. You know, that's a godly thing. Excellence is a godly thing. So if that's what you're pursuing, you know, I'm going to step in and help you, you know, accomplish that. Okay, so again, Jesus is saying, I don't do anything I don't see the Father doing. How did he see what the Father's doing? Communion. They were in the greatest of relationship. Remember all those times in the Bible where it says, before day, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, or Jesus, you know, went alone by himself to pray. At night, what was he doing? He slept every once in a while, but most of the time, it seemed like he was praying all night. That communion with the Lord lets him see what's going on in heaven. That's Colossians 3, 2, having that heavenly perspective, keeping your focus on what's going on up in heaven. And then you start bringing heaven to earth because whatever you focus on is what manifests first in your life. Okay? So we can do that as well. If we keep our focus on the Father, keep our focus on Jesus, keep our focus on Holy Spirit, we can see everything that they're doing. Revelation will be an everyday thing to us. It will just flow for us. And then we can go and just be excellent in the earth realm. Just like we're set up for amazing success. There's no way that we can fail now that we know who we are. Because when you know who you are, you can't go back to what you did before. You're only going forward seeking and wanting and desiring more. Well, you know, there's always an exception. But I don't know anybody who would actually get all of this revelation and then turn around and want to go back to that mundane life. I mean, it's possible. And please don't take that as a criticism. But I'm saying, like, seriously, like, we are supernatural people that's the only way to explain it like we can rise above head and tail above everybody else on this earth you know and and it's not about like you're criticizing anybody you're one uh, one upping anybody or anything like that it's not like that he does he will do that for each one of us you know we can all be the best at something we can all be the greatest the grandest the most awesome and it's not about you know like um trying to be famous or stuff that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about impacting the world you know because of the name of God all right so yeah so communion is what allowed Jesus to do everything that he saw the father doing he would just get into communion when you get into communion you know you you get swept away and you get taken into that heavenly realm and they just you know they show you the things that are going on they show you the things that are to come they show you things that help you bless you set you up for success heal you restore you all that stuff and then you you know you live that out and when you live it out if you're living it out the way they lived it out you live it out and help other people you know it spills over into other people's lives all right, there's one scripture. I kind of try to stay away from Romans because when um, 9 out of 10 teachers speak about and teach about the spirit of adoption, the spirit of orphanhood, they always go to Romans 8. But I'm going to jump in here on this one just because it, it piggybacks on um, what I just said about I only do what I see my father doing. And instead of going to Romans 8, 14, where he specifically mentions the spirit of adoption, I'm going to go to Romans 8, 17. And Romans 8, 17 says that those who are led by the spirit have the right to be called sons of God. Okay, so that's beautiful. That's just like what Jesus was doing. And when he said, I only do what I see my father doing. You know, when we choose to be led by the spirit as opposed to anything else, then we have the right to be called a son of God. Why? Because we're going to see what he's doing. And then we're going to be able to replicate that, duplicate that, imitate that right there on the earth. Such a beautiful picture. And I just love like he's so the way everything's so intertwined. It's like, dude, I just always... You know, I say this over and over again, but seriously, if I had known so much more as I was coming up, just think of how much we could have accomplished by now because, you know, like there's there's no excuse. Like he formulated a plan for amazing success. So like all the dumb stuff that I've done, I didn't have to do all that dumb stuff. You know, whether somebody else taught me or not, like if I had, a, you know, been pointed in the right direction and just like a little bit of stuff, then I could have... You know, like he always makes sure once you get this one revelation, then you get the next revelation, then you get the next revelation. He wants you to come into that fullness. You know, he wants you to know more and more about him all the time, as much as you possibly can. So usually like once you get a little bit of revelation, you're so hungry that you want another thing. You know, some people move faster than others and that's okay. What matters is that you're learning and receiving from him and, and you know, doing better, getting better all the time. So that's Romans 8, 14. Those who, oh, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 14, not 8, 17. Those who are led by the Spirit of God have the right to be called the sons of God. 
and John 14. And I'm not reading any scriptures from John 15 today, but John 15 is so good. Like when you get that revelation from Jesus about um, him being the vine, and like there's great stuff there. Just meditate on that scripture sometimes. And that's a scripture that you can meditate on, you know, a couple times a year. And you'll really get some amazing things out of there. But first of all, I'm going to go to John 4.19. John 4.19 tells us that. I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> it tells us that um, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Again, that's such a great picture because um, Jesus was so loving, so compassionate always happy you know always trying to teach always trying to he was just wonderful you know everything that he did was just great like he never did anything halfway he always went you know complete and that's important because that's how God is he's a God of completeness a God of wholeness and so you know sometimes we do things in part just because our knowledge is limited our understanding is limited our love is limited our resources are limited but that's not true for them and once we really understand um that when we see jesus and when we have revelation of jesus we also have that revelation of the father we start to realize that we can do everything well you know you can do everything well you can love your parents well you can love your children well you can love your spouse well you can be excellent in whatever career you have you can do those things well because the lord makes that an option for you he makes that available for you I'm thinking back to um, how close he and the Lord were, uh, he and the Father were forever. Think back to when they were coming back from Jerusalem and Jesus wasn't around and then they went back and he was teaching in the synagogue when he was 12 years old and he said, you should know that I would be about my father's business. You know, if we get into communion with him, our destiny begins to unfold, just like everything starts to come alive, like our purpose, our assignments, you know, his voice becomes so clear and crisp and, you know, like he could even just whisper and you'll be like, what, Lord? You know, you'll hear it. It's so beautiful. And that all has to do with, you know, just seeking after him, looking for him, searching for him just the way Jesus did. He was our perfect example in all things and his communion with the Father. You know, we might say that because they're the three in one that we can't have that kind of communion, but that's the exact opposite of what he showed us you know, in the New Testament, by his actions, by his behavior. He showed us that we can have that great communion with the Lord. We can be so close to the Lord that when we're speaking out, everybody just knows those words are not our own, you know, that they've been divinely implanted to be delivered specifically. This is your revelation for today. This is your revelation for today. You know, we can have that exact same communion with the Father, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit that Jesus had with the Father and Holy Spirit while he was on earth. It is absolutely possible. You know, so that's what you seek after. That's what you seek after. I told you this Jesus day was going to be good just because he is so everything. You know, he's just the bestest. You know, there's no if to ands or buts about it. He is the bestest. And I just love them and... I hope that you love them and I hope that you're just like totally head over heels in love with them because that's what the goal is like when you're head over heels in love with them you're gonna want to spend that deep time with them that long time with them that focused time with them you're gonna want to serve you're gonna want to honor you're gonna want to bless you're gonna want to heal you know you're gonna want to deliver people you know you're gonna be looking forward to your dreams you're gonna be you know just waiting for their voice and submitted to it and excited for it and you know you just you cannot go wrong by loving them and being with them and you know and it's good that we learn from other people we're able to learn from other people but the communion with them like that's where it all it all opens up for you you know on a personal level it's just you just got to be with them you just 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 spend time with them okay i'm going to stop this right here and start another set and then we're going to worship a few minutes and then i'm going to bless you and let you go all right so let's just enter in and 
and worship because it's so good. I really enjoy it. It's fun. Jesus, I just thank you so much for feeling, being willing to leave the glory of the heavenly realm and come down here and show us the Father's love and who he is and how to draw closer to him and how to just live and how to be excellent. I just bless you for that. And I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you for standing in front of me so that when the Father hears me say anything, he looks up and he sees you first and I can go right into his presence. I am just thrilled about that. I'm overjoyed when I think about how easy it is to access him because of what you did first. So I just praise you for that. I thank you for that. I just praise you, Lord God. And I love you for adopting me. Thank you so much. Thank you for telling me that I'm your daughter. Thank you for showing me that I'm your daughter. Thank you for confirming it over and over and over until I got it, until I really understood it. I just love you for that. And I am just constantly in awe of your love and how you reach out to find me. I just so I don't even know what to say I just love you for that I hear the Lord saying walking 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 in a forward motion and walking on your path to meet me Meeting me is the acme. That's the point of conversion between heart and spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I would absolutely agree with that. That's like the high point, you know, when you're going down your path to revelation and then all of a sudden you get that point and you're like, oh, you know, Oh, I get it. That's absolutely accurate. Not that he's going to be interact inaccurate, but you know what I mean. I'm sorry. I'm getting us distracted here. Thank you, Father. I thank you for being willing to speak to me. And I thank you for delivering words for your daughters and your sons. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for letting me see you. Thank you for letting me know you. Thank you for letting me hear your voice and your heart. Thank you for that understanding. And thank you for breaking through all my foolishness, all of the shells and the walls and things that I built up forever. Thank you for just plowing through all of that stuff and grabbing hold of me so that I would be changed forever. You had to do so much work, and I'm so glad that you did it with joy. I can hear him laughing. He's got his head back laughing because, man, he has done a work in me. Gosh. Lord, you're so funny. He said, I knew you would come around. <laughs> of course you did. Things like that he says just make me laugh because they're like so obvious. But then when you hear him say obvious stuff, you know, it's all right. It's all right. I just love, do you see how easy it is to get into his presence? You know, once you get in the habit of that, you'll just be there. It'll just be there. You know, like get to that place where you're so close to them. Like all you have to do is just focus for a minute and they're like, boom, they come and grab you and they take you there. And then you go and you spend as much time as you need to. Um, I'm just going to bless you right now. I'll let you go. I want you to spend as much time as you need to worshiping them and don't ever stop. But the blessing that I want to give to you is going to come after this. I want to remind you of um, when Jesus was in Gethsemane and he was praying and he was saying, Father, I'm grieved at the point of death and he was saying Abba, you know, he called him Abba. And Abba, you know, we, we start out with Ab back in the Old Testament in Genesis. Ab means father. And then Jesus called him Abba. So Ab is like father or dad and Abba is saying daddy. So Jesus was at that place where he was like, 
you know, I'm so just broken, so alone, so undone, so overwhelmed. You know, he's like, I'm a child, like, you know, like a, like a four-year-old just calling for my daddy. You know, I need you to pick me up. I'm scared. I'm this and that. And that's such a beautiful picture. So I just am blessing you right now. And I release over you that if ever you're hurting, you're sad, that, you know, if that child in you needs to be healed because of something that you went through when you're young, I just release Abba over you right now in Jesus' name. And I say, call out to your daddy and let him pick you up, scoop you up into your arms anytime you need it, even if you just want to say hello. But I just release that Abba over you. Just receive him as your daddy and just let him love you and protect you and make everything right in your life. All right. Thank you so much for going through this with me. Stay in contact. I will appreciate it. Thank you.